So, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, I must say I'm very happy today. First of all, I was not sure that I was not I was going to make it to this event. Grace is a very good friend of mine, and I know I have so many colleagues here who are engineers or who have taken engineering as a course. And when I got this invitation, I had actually planned to be here today. But I can tell you, yesterday at around 4 o'clock, I got another notification that we needed to have a meeting today with the CS. But God works in a very miraculous way. That she, God had actually planned that I had to be in this particular meeting. And therefore, that meeting with the CS had to be postponed up to 11 o'clock. And therefore, members, because we are going to discuss something that is so dear to my heart on issues of sustainability, and I must be here today. Grace, who is the NEF ambassador to Kenya, our distinguished partners who have been, also, uh, been appreciated here, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I have the pleasure to join you today during this auspicious event of the African SDG Week edition of 2024 and the theme Youth-Led Innovation for Sustainable Development in Africa and with a sub-theme of SDG progress in Kenya and policy engagement. Sustainable development offers a common global roadmap for inclusive and sustainable progress. Over the past decade, notable progress has been made in advancing SDG goals worldwide with clear contrast between the countries in the global north and the global south. With only six years left to conclude the SDGs, we must consolidate our efforts to accelerate the achievement of the SDGs. The participation of the vulnerable groups, including the youth and the women, in SDG ecosystem needs to meet the global expectations. As a key asset of the continent, the youth have a crucial role to play in amplifying the participation and the contribution to achieving the SDG. Ladies and gentlemen, there are 1.2 billion youth people aged between 15 and 24 years, accounting to about 16% of the global population. By 2030, the target, the target date for the SDG, the number of the youth is projected to have grown by 7% to nearly 1.3 billion. The youth have already contributed to the resilience of their communities, proposing innovative solutions, driving social progress, and inspiring political change. The youth are also agents of change, mobilizing to advance the SDG to improve the lives of the people and the health of the planet. Africa has the youngest population in the world, with 70% of the sub-Saharan African under the age of 30. Such a high number of people is an opportunity for the continent growth but only if these new generations are fully empowered to realize their best potential. It is especially important that young people are included in the decision making and given the opportunities to work and to innovate. In Kenya, the youth constitute about 30% of the total population and they are the future in all aspects of realizing the change that we aspire. The central principle of SDG is the assurance that no one will be left behind. The SDG are meant for all nations, all peoples of all ages and all societies. The, uni the, the universal nature of the 2030 agenda entails that the youth should be considered across all the goals and the targets. Youth are specifically mentioned in four areas. The youth em employment, adolescent girls, education, and sports for peace. Moreover, Young people are recognized as agents of change, entrusted with fulfilling their own potential and ensuring a world fit for future generations. Ladies and gentlemen, let me address the young people. You are the torchbearers of the 2030 agenda. And when you talk about this, I know that we don't want to call you the, the future leaders. You are supposed to take the leadership today. Because if you are not on that particular decision-making table, then people will make many out of you. Therefore, we call upon members of the young fraternity to take their rightful role in decision making. Indeed, the young people have been architects in the development of the 2030 agenda and remain engaged in the frameworks and the processes that support its implementation. The 
follow-ups and the reviews, and the adoption of the 2030 agenda represented in the culmination of the intensive three-year process involving member states, the civil societies, including youth organizations in the development of the specific goals and targets. Achieving the 2030 agenda requires strong and inclusive partnership between the young people and the all stakeholders so that the development challenges facing the youth can be tackled. Ladies and gentlemen, let me delve into four major areas where SDGs make most impact to the youth and the reverse is true. In SDG number four, on quality education, it is clear that education is a fundamental right for the young people everywhere. Sustainable Development Goal number four calls for inclusive and equitable quality education and promotion of lifelong learning opportunities for all. To achieve this, there is need for concerted efforts to ensure that the young women and men have access to free, equitable and quality education as well as targeted training opportunities. In this regard, the youth can propose policies that ensure the quality of primary and secondary education should be complemented by affordable technical, vocational and tertiary education that provide youth with relevant skills for employment and entrepreneurship. The Sustainable Development Goal number 8 contextualizes the call for decent work for young people, the issues of unemployment, underemployment and poor job quality are proven to be persistent and daunting. Young are, youth are three times more likely to be unemployed than the adult people, with a global youth unemployment rate at 13% in 2023. Many young people are engaged in low paying, precarious or informal jobs. There is need to propose policies that will surmount the challenges of securing and retaining decent jobs for the vulnerable and the marginalized youth. Ladies and gentlemen, Sustainable Goal number 13 aims to convert climate change and its impact in taking urgent action. And I can tell you as we aspire to achieve our vision 2030, where Kenya envisages that we shall have a middle income economy, that the quality of life of the Kenyan people will have been improved. And this is pegged on four, three pillars, the political pillar, the social pillar, and the political pillar. And what enables all these pillars are the infrastructures and the energy. And I want to talk about this climate change because it's going to define our agenda. Young people are not only victims of climate change, they are also val valuable contributors to climate action. They are the agents of change, the entrepreneurs and the innovators. Whether through education, science or technology, the young people are scaling up their efforts and using their skills to accelerate the climate action. We need to join in the momentum of the COP26, COP27, COP28 and the Secretary General of the United Nations Youth Advisory Group on Climate Change to amplify the youth voices to engage young people in an open and transparent dialogue as the world gears towards raising their ambition and to accelerate the action to address the climate change. In matters energy, ladies and gentlemen, the range of energy technologies that are supported the realization of SDG number seven, whereby we are talking about affordable and clean energy including the specific target to ensure universal access to affordable, reliable, modern energy services by 2030. As we talk about Africa, about 900 million African people have no access to electricity. And this is a gap that we need to bridge. In, it's also important to note that the access to affordable and reliable and clean energy is crucial to achieving the sustainable development goals from eradicating poverty, through to advancing health and education, facilitating industrial development, and reducing the greenhouse gas emission. And nuclear power, where I work, and guys, we are looking forward to deploying the first nuclear power plant by the year 2034. And I believe that this is going to be a game changer to this country, that is going to address most of these SDG issues that I'm talking about. When you have reliable, stable power, I can tell you we shall have growth in terms of Manufacturing and once we have manufacturing, they will create job opportunities for young people. Once we create these job opportunities for young people, we are talking about eradication of poverty, we are reducing hunger, and all these other SDGs will just fall in place. And therefore, as we look forward to ensuring that we are climate resilient in terms of energy, because energy contributes about 31% of all the greenhouse gases. 
So if you can make sure that our energy mix is that clean and renewable. And I want to bring you good news for the Kenyan case because we have been contributing to all this climate action over the last three years. Kenya is a member state uh, of Paria and, and, and a, a signatory to Paria Accord, and it has contributed, it has made specific targets to ensure by the year 2030 we reduce these greenhouse gases by 32%. Currently, we are talking about a grid that is clean to the tune of 90% coming from clean and renewable energy. This is sustainable development. And we are saying by the year 2030, it will be 100% because the 7% that is coming from diesel power plant generation will be removed from the national grid and be replaced with nuclear energy. And therefore that means by the year 2034, it will be 100% clean, renewable energy. And by so doing, we shall have contributed towards our climate action. So we want to ensure that we continue to promote the use of renewable energy, like hydro and geothermal and also bringing on board the solar, uh, solar power plants and wind energy. We are also um, happy that Kenya is the largest country in Eastern Central Africa with the largest wind farm that comes from Lake Trukana, producing 300 megawatts. And Kenya has a potential of producing 1,700 megawatts from wind and another 1,700 from solar. So when you combine all these sources of energy, then we shall have a sustainable uh, infrastructure that looks into the future. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we understand that uh, in ensuring that the voices of the youth are heard and make an impact in the policy making and formulation, you are the best in this since, first of all, the young people are the critical thinkers. Part of being young involves making sense of personal experience and asking questions about the world around you. And you're also the change makers. The young people have the power to act and mobilize others. We have seen this in the past even in the Kenyan scenario. You are being used as a case study even for Africa and the world, that you can make change when you fish that this world. And I want to appreciate that particular aspect. Innovators. Where else can you talk about innovators if you can stop the innovation mind of the young people? In addition to bringing the fresh perspective, the young people often have direct knowledge of and insight into issues that are not accessible to other spheres of population. In terms of communicators, outside the international development sector, few people are aware that the world leaders have come to historical far-reaching agreement to improve the lives of the people and the planet by the 20, year 2030. The young people can be partners in communicating the development agenda to their peers and communities at local levels as well as intercontinental levels. These young people are also leaders. When young people are empowered with the knowledge of their rights and equipped with the, with the leadership skill, they can drive the change in the communities and the countries. Youth-led organizations like these ones that we are seeing here today, and networks in particular, should be supported and strengthened because they contribute to the development of civil leadership skills among the young people, especially the marginalized youth. Ladies and gentlemen, as I come to conclusion, let me make a clerical call to the youth. Take every opportunity and make most of it. With only six years left, we can propose policies and framework to ensure sustainability of the planet through partnership and ensuring that no one is left behind in achieving sustainable development goal. And I know the people that I'm talking to here today are the people who are going to make this difference in our lives to come. Thank you so much and may God bless you.